So does this sound familiar? You've been playing online for a while, you're doing great, you're making real progress, you're liking what you're hearing from your guitar. You can play some scales, you can play some cool chords, and now you're ready to jam. You go on your phone, you find some music buddies, you know who play instruments, and you arrange to meet up and jam. Then come jamming time, you know, you get guitars up, you get comfortable. Let's jam! Yeah, let's jam! What do we do? Then it hits you. You have bedroom guitar syndrome. Yes, many guitarists who learn online suffer from this fate. You haven't learned the conventional way and you have no experience of playing with music or playing with other people and you're completely lost. But don't fret because I am going to show you six hacks that are gonna get you like a jamming pro in no time. We're gonna start off easy. We're gonna start with just simple things that you're gonna be able to do to play with other people. We're also gonna look at scales and how to play over chord changes so that everything sounds super melodic and you're not just noodling about. We're gonna look at rhythm concepts. We're gonna look at lead concept. And at the end, I'm gonna show you the ultimate jamming tool and that is playing by ear so that you can walk into any room with any musician, pick up your guitar and just start playing along without knowing the chords, without knowing nothing. And this is also the same for backing tracks. You can stick on any music that you like, any track at all, anything comes on the radio, if anyone listens to the radio anymore, or YouTube or Spotify, you pick up your guitar and you can just start to play. That is the dream and I'm gonna show you how you can do that and it's gonna be super simple and much easier than you thought. So. Make sure you stick around for that. Okay, so we're gonna start off really simple. So let's just say you meet up with another guitarist and they start playing a chord progression. Identify the chords that they're playing and then try and do something a little bit different over the top of it. So maybe just a simple picking pattern, for example. you can just strum something a little bit different as well. Now remember, you're not competing with the other guitarist, you're complimenting them. You're creating music together. It's not about competing or outplaying the other person, it's about working together to create some music. All right, so always remember that when you're jamming, all right? So. Simple, right? next step to that is to play the same chords but play them somewhere else in the fretboard and we can do that using the caged system. If you know the notes in the top two strings, okay so let's start with this string, the low E string, right? The first thing we need to find is the A note to find the first chord which is A minor, okay? So I'm going to go E, E, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and then I'm going to make the E minor shape. So, I'm going to continue along the low E string to find the next chord, which is a C. Okay, the C note here is in the 8th fret, and I'm going to use the E major shape to create my C chord. And then, I'm going to find my next chord, which is an F. But this time I'm going to use the A string, alright? And if I find the F on the A string, it's over here, and I'm going to use the E. A shape and then the E is here so that's just one fret back and then back to my A minor. So let's try those chords over the top we'll keep it nice and simple and just do something a little bit different rhythmically. The 
next thing we're going to look at is triads and how we can use them over the chord progressions as well. Now triads are really nice, they've got really nice tones that complement any chord progression and they're just simple three note inversions of any chord. Alright, so let's look at the triad shapes we're going to use for the chord progression. So we've got A minor, we're going to use the D minor shape down here. Now, the way to you find your triads, uh, again, knowing the notes on the fretboard, <coughs> If you can find, for the D minor shape, we know this is the D note, right? B, C, C sharp, D. If we can find the A note, which is in the 10th fret, then make the D minor shape, we've got an A minor triad. Right? We stick along this part of the fretboard, and we look for our next uh, triad for a C. We've got this. All right, so you bar on the bottom two strings, on the 10th fret and you get middle finger, sorry, on the 8th fret and you get your middle finger on the 9th. And this is just the bottom three notes of the, uh, the E shape bar chord for C, right? You get that here. Alright. Now the next, uh, the next uh, triad is an F. Okay. So we have this shape here, which is 8, 10, 10, right? And then if we just bring this shape back one fret, we have an E triad. All right, nice. Let's just see how that sounds over the top, right? So the next step is using those triad shapes for lead guitar, all right? Now this is a great way to play in line with the chord progression as well, all right? So you're actually playing over the chord changes, so things sound a lot more melodic than just playing aimlessly with scales, for example, all right? So what I mean by that is if you take these triad shapes, A minor, right? And you can just look at the notes individually, right? Rather than together as a chord. Now, what's the difference between the A minor and the C here, right? You can see really clearly the only note that changes is this note to this note, right? So, if we change to that note when it changes to the C, that's going to really sound nice with that chord change, right? <clears throat> and we change from the C to the F, we can do this, all right? Or we can, again, go from eight to 10. All right, we can really see uh, what notes change for the chords, right? And then from F to E. Okay. So it's really identifying the notes that are changing within the chords. When you're playing a scale, you're really playing something general, notes that are included in all the chords, really. But when you start targeting these notes within the triads, uh, along with the chord changes, you really start to play in line with the chord changing. You're start starting to change the notes in line with the chords. So, so let's try that. Let's just keep it nice and simple. Let's just play the notes uh, really slowly over the chord changes. And let's just target those notes, right? So, we've got to be targeting them for A minor. And then we want to change to this note for the C. All right. And then we want to get one of these notes for the F. And then just move it back one fret, wherever we are, to the E. All right. Because remember, we're playing the exact same chord shape. All right. So any note that we're playing, if we move one fret back, that's going to sound really cool. So let's try that. step is actually using scales, all right? Now, you can identify the key that we're playing in, right? Because the main chord is an A minor, all right? That's the first chord. And nine times out of 10, that is gonna be the key you're playing. Not always, but it's a good way of identifying. Another way is by playing 
by ear, and I'm going to show you about that in a minute. But we know we're playing an E minor, and we've got that scale, right? We've also got the extension. Now, I've got uh, many lessons on that, so I'm not going to go over the scale at the moment. What I'm going to do is show you how to combine the scale with the triads, which is much more effective because you're not just aiming aimlessly, you're not just noodling, you've actually got a purpose and you're targeting certain notes, all right? So, if you look at the E minor scale along with these triads, right? On our doorstep, we've got, right? That extension of the first shape, right? So we've got 10, 8, 10, 8, and 9, right? So we know we can play along with those notes as well, right? So let's try and combine those notes with the trias to see what we can make up, to give it a little bit more beef, but still targeting the same notes, all right? So let's have a go at that. So the next step that we're going to look at is to actually play by ear. So let's just say you meet up with some musicians and they're already playing something, you want to pick up your guitar and you want to start jamming along, all right? And that's entirely possible without even knowing the chords. Or let's just say you stick on some music uh, or a backing track and you might be able to just play along with it right away. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So I'm going to create another track here and then we're going to learn how to play it by ear. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to the track that I've just created. Then we're going to play the notes in the top string and try and use your ear to figure out what note resonates with everything, right? With everything that we're hearing. Okay, so it might take a little bit of time, a little bit of practice, but this is really great training and such a useful tool. So let's play the track. We'll start with the open string. Try the next. Yeah. No. Second fret. No. Third fret. No. Fourth fret. Third fret. Sixth fret. So, I've identified this one here in the 7th fret, I think this might be my key, which is B. Now, does the song sound happy? A good way to judge is try singing, I won the lottery along with it. I won the lottery! I won the lottery! So, not a happy song, so it's not a major song, it's a minor so it's a minor key that we're playing in, alright? So that means we can use the minor pentatonic scale, right? So that's our shape one here with we've got the note on the top string, right? Now let's see if that works. We've identified the key, we've identified the scale we can use, and then uh, we can use the shape one, and then we've also got the extension of that, right? Alright. Now, of course, I'll go over the scale in my other videos in my course, so... I'm not going to go over that too much now, but that's how you identify and play by ear. Now, <clears throat> what if you come across a happy song? So I'm going to go over that in a second. I'm going to record something here real quick so you don't know what it is, and we're going to find the key for that. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to play the track I've just recorded, 
uh, a nice little chilled out happy beat. And then we're going to find out the key, right? By doing the exact same thing. All right. Go. Oh. So again, we found the top note. All right, it's D note. To get to the major pentatonic scale, we just move three frets back, right? One, two, three. And then into shape one again, right? But that's the B minor pentatonic scale, you might be thinking. And it is, because I'm targeting the B note here. We really want to start with the D note, all right? Now the D note, which is the, the key we're in, they share the same notes, right? Every minor has a major uh, twin, you can think of. And it really depends on what note you, you target within the scale. So for the major notes, we want to get a pinky, our index finger on the G string, on the 7th fret, all right? And then the D note here is again with our pinky on the 10th fret, right? So... See? Happy! So that is it, that is all the steps, that's all the hacks that are going to help you jam with anyone in any situation. So I hope you enjoyed that, please let me know in the comments, if you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, because that always makes me smile. Alright guys, take it easy, and I will see you soon in my next lesson.